Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today we are going to talk about gum disease and how you can dramatically improve the health of your gums without seeing a dentist, without even seeing a hygienist. What are all of the free or nearly free things that you can do to dramatically improve the health of your gum? Now, 99% of this video is going to be on how you can incorporate different ways of brushing your teeth. Okay, you see, I'm not gonna be talking about oil pulling because it just doesn't work. We're not gonna be talking about mouthwashes, special mouthwashes, because they have very limited uses. In fact, there's only one mouthwash which we sometimes recommend and can help. All the others will just freshen your breath and make you feel like you've done a good job with your cleaning. We're not going to be talking about air flossers or water jets, and although these things can work again in certain situations, they cost a little bit more money. So we're trying to keep things really low cost here. Now, the inspiration for this video was a webinar that I was on. So it was a dental focused webinar and they showed this chart and along the Y axis, which is the one which goes up, we have level of disease, okay? So if you've got a lot of disease, the marker will be higher up on this axis. And along the bottom on our X axis, we have the, the kind of how expensive a treatment is. So we've got free treatments uh, right at the beginning, and then we've got much more expensive um, treatments, treatments with specialist periodontists, complicated grafting, stuff like that, you know, towards the, the end there. And the graph looks something like this. So the real interesting take home message on a graph like this is that you can get a dramatic improvement in the health of your gums by just implementing a whole bunch of free or nearly free techniques. Okay, and, and you can decrease your the level of gum disease dramatically. There is, this is the maximum bang for your buck, you know, in terms of what you can do to improve the, the health of your gums. Now, as we go further down this graph, you still get improvements. So if you see the hygienist, if you see the periodontist, you, and they ad advise treatments, yes, these treatments are going to be expensive, but the level of improvement you're gonna get, and there is an improvement, the level of improvement isn't as dramatic as what you could have done right at the beginning from a really unhealthy mouth to just learning how to brush effectively. Now, when I see people who and they need like all on four treatment and their teeth are in a terrible condition, they'll tend to fall into two categories. One category is I've lost all hope. Okay, so once somebody's teeth get to a certain stage, they don't look that great. You know, you kind of lose hope. You, you, you're brushing your teeth and you're thinking, what is the point? All right, they're, they're so bad. What is brushing going to do to help? Okay, so these people will openly tell me that they hardly ever brush their teeth. The second second group of people is the people who tell me that they brush two or three times a day, their gums never bleed, and yet they have all of this gum disease, which is really obvious. Now, if you're falling in this category, the honest, harsh truth is that although you may be brushing that number of times a day, you are not doing it effectively enough. Okay, so you can do a terrible brush 20 times a day and you will still get gum disease. If you do a good brush once every two days, right, and I'm not recommending you brush your teeth once every two days, but if you did do that, you could pretty much eliminate gum disease. So let's look at the single thing which absolutely everybody needs to be doing, and this this is toothbrushing. And here is a toothbrush. Okay, you can see it's quite a basic thing. In fact, this was a free toothbrush that I got at a hotel. And I bet just by using something as simple as this, we can achieve a fantastic clean. Right now, you can use electric brushes and yes, they're fantastic, but obviously they are a bit more expensive. So let's look at how we can do a really good clean with this. The first thing we need to do is angle the bristles. So, okay, I just happen to have a model of a, a set of teeth here. So when we're brushing, we want to angle the bristles into the gum, okay? So we've got a top set of teeth here, and we're not gonna go flat like that. We're gonna go angled upwards, okay? So you can see the way the bristles are kind of deforming and they're going in between the teeth there, right? And that's what we want. We want to sweep our gum line around the tooth. 
Okay, and once you, we've got our brush on there and it's angled like that, okay, we're gonna do our small round movement. So the brush head is, is moving roughly the, the circumference of the, the kind of the shape of the gum. Okay, so small round movements, which you, you've heard this term like a million times before, and um, we're just gonna rotate the brush all the way around, okay? So once we've done the outside surface, we're now going to do the inside surface. We're doing this blind because you can't see the inside surface as you're brushing and you're using exactly the same motion. As we get to the front of the mouth, the brush angle is changing from like a sideways angle to more upright angle, and that's gonna help you get all around the back of the teeth there. When it comes to doing the lower set of teeth, I mean, this is this is a printed CT scan of somebody who needed all on four, okay? So it's, uh, it's not the best thing in the world, but at the bottom, instead of, at the top we have angled our brush that way, at the bottom we're gonna angle our brush this way, okay? Again, just sweeping that gun line, all right? And use the, the right angle at the bottom, at the back, again, we're gonna use a more upright motion and we're just gonna use that same small circular motion and that's gonna do a fantastic job. Common areas that people miss are the back of the last tooth, okay, especially if you've got a missing tooth there, right, the, the gap in between because that's always difficult to, to kind of access. And if you've got very overlapping teeth, then do this the best you can, but you're going to miss a whole bunch of areas. I'm going to need another technique to kind of um, get in between our teeth because in situations where we've got nice straight teeth, brushing alone will will be absolutely fine in the vast majority of cases, unless you have active gum disease. So active gum disease causes the gum to shrink, and you can see here on this model, we've got these kind of gaps in between the teeth, okay? So we've got the tooth contacting, and then we've got a gap inside there. Let's look at how we are gonna clean that. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're going to use things called TP brushes. TP brushes are basically tiny little bottle brushes. If you were thinking I was gonna say floss, you can give yourself half a point because if you don't have any black triangles, if you don't have gaps between your teeth in this position, you don't need to use TP brushes. In fact, you can get away with just using floss. And floss is generally very good, okay? There's a bit of a technique to it and we'll look at that a little bit later on. But TP brushes come in a whole bunch of different sizes. So you've got very small ones, like pink size ones, and they've got very large ones, like the gray ones. And you have to use the most appropriate size brush for your gap, okay? Not for your mouth, because you could end up having four or five different colors to go in all the different size gaps that you have. And some of our patients need to do this because that is their unique situation. So this is where the advice by seeing a hygienist or a dentist will come in more useful because they can recommend the, the correct size of brush for you. Now, some people find the brushes using TP brushes quite painful. And the reason is they're probably not doing it correctly. If you just bend the brush a little bit, you'll find it much easier to go into the gaps, okay? And you'll end up poking your gum a lot less. And poking the gum is where the pain starts, okay? And that causes more bleeding than necessary. You're causing bleeding through trauma. Uh, by poking your gums. So we want to just clean everything and let it be. Okay, if you use a brush which is too small, it's not going to touch the edges. If you use a brush which is too big, you're not going to be able to get it in. So that's why, you know, you want to use the correct size for each gap that you have. Now, if you are in the UK, you can shop at, I don't know, Tesco, Waitrose, um, Sainsbury's, whatever it is, and they might have different brands of these what we call interdental brushes, okay? I call them TP brushes because TP is the brand um, and it's a pretty well-known brand. It's probably, I'm guessing because it's well-known, it's probably more expensive and Sainsbury's and whatever that have their own brands. The thing to bear in mind is you can use whatever you want. The color code is going to be different. So whereas a pink TP is really small on, um, on the TP scale, there's no universal color scheme, okay? So the Sainsbury's brushes will be a completely different color set. If you find the size that works for you and the size you need, just make a note of the brush diameter or the brush thickness, I'm sure it'll be on the packet, and you can then use whatever brand you like. So for most people, this is going to be absolutely fine. Now, if you've got gum disease and you have been to a dentist or a hygienist, they might have used the word pocket, okay? And pocket is a little bit more than just a place to keep your TP brushes. 
Okay, a pocket around a tooth is essentially a little gap between the gum and the, the tooth itself. So if you look at a tooth side on, you've got the gum level, which is here. But if you go between the tooth and the gum, the area where the gum actually attaches onto the tooth can be much further down. And this creates that pocket. Okay, it's a little area where we can put a, a probe or something or bacteria can live and get away from all of your brushing actions. They're not going to be affected by normal toothbrushes. They're not going to be affected by TP brushes. So we need something else. What we're going to use in these situations is a single tufted toothbrush. So you can see a single tufted toothbrush is basically a tiny little toothbrush. And the way that we're going to use this is when we know where our pockets are, we're going to just press it against one tooth and the bristles are going to go along the surface of the tooth and go into that pocket. Now, the attachment level, which is hidden, is where all the damage happens. That's where your gum disease starts and that's your kind of your battlefront. OK, so we want to be able to clean that area really, really well. If you want to supercharge the techniques which I've mentioned in this video, you can do it. OK, but I would only recommend doing this for short periods of time and only if your dentist or hygienist has recommended you do this. OK, the way we do this is using Corsodil mouthwash. Now, we use Corsodil because it's got a chemical called chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is a very good antimicrobial agent. In the UK, this is over the counter. I know when I was in Chicago, like 10, 15 years ago, and my wife had toothache and I needed to get this, I couldn't get it because it's a prescription medication. But the way to use this is you tip a little bit into the cap. OK, and then you dip the brush you're going to use in this mouthwash. OK, and then you can apply it locally just to the area which needs it. OK, so if you want to get it into a pocket, you can do that. Uh, if you want to put it on your TP brush in an area where it's always bleeding, you can do that as well. OK, now the only time we typically recommend this is if we've got sites which have quite aggressive gum disease. OK, so there can be one or two areas between your teeth which have aggressive gum disease and there you need to give it just a little bit of a boost, get the gums healthy and then just using these techniques in the way that I've mentioned are, is going to be the, the maximum benefit. OK, it, it, your gums should never bleed. Doing this brushing properly is going to help the gums heal. And as they heal, they can actually shrink. OK, so just a warning, you can get these black triangles, even though you never used to have them, just because the inflammation from your gums has disappeared because you're brushing your teeth properly now. So if you've been affected by gum disease, you've got gum recession, you can check out another video that I've made, which will show you techniques, surgical techniques, they're not free, on how you can rebuild gum uh, after you've had recession, after you've had gum disease. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, as always, guys, take care.